duel play coming up. And once again, Ruins of Sarnath and Noctis versus Luminous. Bear in mind, Noctis had to defeat Avec to make this top 16, and Luminous had to defeat Sombra. So they definitely had to work for their positions. Noctis going in for those light champions, the Anarchy, Ranger, and Nyx. Pretty much his sort of almost tried and tested combination of champions so far. We've seen Noctis go for this composition a lot, but I did see a little bit of extra sort of a chunk coming out on the side of Luminous. I think I saw a saw lag in there, but also a couple of light champions as well. Well, sort of just, just reflecting on what we saw from these guys before, um, you know, I've, I've, I've got in my notes like Luminous, saw lag, beast, I remember he had some some particularly good uh, performances on Sorlak, particularly um, in his duel versus Sombra, I believe he defeated to get here. And um, Noctis, we saw his Anarchy in the rounds. Like he he tend to run Anarchy first in all the maps that we that saw. That was very common for um, sure. His very first series, he wasn't knocked off Anarchy at any point. He didn't die a single time. And then I believe Noctis versus Avic uh, in order to qualify, his Anarchy was by far his like star champion. You're running it first, the the maps he lost Anarchy were the ones that he struggled. I don't say struggled, but the ones that it was a lot closer but when he was allowed to ju just do what he wants on anarchy this guy's a monster I think it's a testament to how effective, I guess, personal picks are. Because, you know, we saw um, Zron with that Ranger coming through. Three, Toxic with his two, Scale Bearer. One, there are clearly some champions in this game that some of these players really do really push beyond with. And I feel like with Noctis currently in duels, Anarchy is that champion for him. And once again, starting with Anarchy first, like we saw. So these, these two, I suppose, notable champions that these guys are good with, starting off first things first. Noctis on Anarchy and Luminous on the Sawlag. So Ruins of Sarnath, we know how fast Anarchy can get around this map. It's also a matter of, like, you know, him in particular can get around really quickly because even though there's a lot of sort of tight turns here and there, because his passive giving him that increased air movement, he can easily navigate the map without really being challenged too much. You can see how fast he's able to sort of turn while in midair. If you're not going to hit any walls, I mean, look how fast this champion goes. Well, I catch your saw like a bunch of guaranteed lightning oh, damage ball. as Luminous was caught on the jump pad. Luminous knows that these uh, power-ups are quite away from spawning now. He has the timer on the mega, uh, well, a heavy armor, I should say, and the mega health even harder too, because Luminous was able to pick that one up. Again, though, he did manage to catch him with a couple of rails. Rocket comes through as well, but not with a huge amount of damage so far. Luminous still, lots of health, good to go. Oh, a bit of damage come through. Yeah, this mega three damage in Rocket is unlikely to really follow up from that. Luminous looking super healthy right now. The injection is ready, so if Noctis gets caught out in a fight, he can survive. He hit that 90 damage plus 43. That's a lot of damage on Luminous. However, Anarchy, being the squishy little guy he is, cannot take a huge amount of damage, especially seeing as he can't tank rails just yet. Nice. And just take him out. Catches a really good spawn, but he's going to pop that dual wield early on. It's going to at least keep Noctis at bay for just a little while while he escapes. There we go, controlling this heavy armor once again. Noctis looking really strong. Luminous stuck on Baskovitz and health looking fairly low right now. I feel like if that was any other champion of a similar health pool, Noctis would have actually got that frag. It was because Luminous popped that immediate dual wield just to keep Noctis away. When you spawn and you've got those two machine guns, it does so much damage. Misses one rail, one more is going to do the job, but can he follow it through? He's trying to, but not quite. I mean, you do have to be careful when you're chasing a Blaskovich. You know, he's, he's kind of got that that defensive capability with the dual wield. Like, if you catch him point blank, he can shred you, especially if you're someone really squishy, like Anarchy. Oh, just that rail, though. Yep, he did hear the mega go. Well, he knows Luminous is going to have access to that mega health now. But he did hit with the rail, though. It's almost like nullifying the damage uh, that, or the extra health he would have got from it. Luminous still looking with no armor. Bear in mind, until Anarchy is able to um, put himself over 80 HP, he is always going to be like really subject to those rails until he can tank them. But even then, you know, you, you get those like charged secondary fire rails doing 90 as well. It's going to be hard for him to survive. Oh. But obviously, the more health he injects himself with, the, the better it's going to be for him. Well, every time Anarchy uses that injection, it will give him just an extra one HP to his maximum health. So if he pops the injection two more times before he loses Anarchy, he's going to be on 80. And if he pops it three more times, he'll be on 81. Now, an Anarchy that can tank one rail and an Anarchy that can tank two rails is night and day how much of an impact that champion will make in a fight. Oops. Oh! oh! Speaking of which, Luminous bags that one and takes Noctis onto his Ranger. So Luminous able to tie things up three minutes into this first round, just still the first round of the first map. I mean, both the. I mean, what we've seen so far is a distinct lack of like super aggressive play, and I think it's because it's what's on the line, right? But the second the pressure starts to add up, you can sometimes see changes in gameplay um, because it's just you know 
decision making becomes a little bit harder to calculate what's worth doing when you're playing for potentially one million dollars. Let's not forget that's what's on, on the line here. That spot in the regionals and both these guys have had to win so many matches just to get to today's games. And you know, if, if they do get eliminated, it's not all hope is not lost. They have three more opportunities, but you know, if you can really qualify early and get that safety net, and now you have that three week sort of breathing room. A lot more of a comfortable position to be in, I think. Now, the pressure is on both players to really make something happen, because once again, we are on the verge of a sudden death. And once again, once we hit sudden death, the next champion down will take the game. Oh, oh that, that rail misses. <laughs> such a last minute rail as well, like zipping past his face. Not a lot of health to take that one either. Yeah, they're going to trade that heavy armor for mega health, no doubt. Luminous really trying to sort of sit here and secure it. Still though, quite dangerous sitting around on mega health for this long, just waiting for it to spawn, because you've seen how fast. Uh, just like I said, the dire world comes through. The dual oh. wheel, but the rocket launcher damage. Noctis places that well and also gets mega health in the process. I think it's kind of crazy how Luminous was sitting on that mega health for so long. But at the last minute, Noctis just got it anyway. Now Noctis, all he has to do is survive for 10 seconds and he's going to win this round. Try and head him off near the uh, heavy armor, keep it from getting it. Yeah, that one missed rail might be super important. Going in for the Ghost Walk as well. There's nothing he can do. That is going to be a round for Noctis. One round up due to the champion limit timeout. I actually have a feeling we're going to see quite a lot of rounds go down to that timeout, though. Just because, like you said, just how cautious these players are starting to be sometimes. But also, you know, really using that clock as a weapon, basically. If they know they have that advantage and they, they can afford to do that, we will start to see that for sure. But Noctis now put on this Anarchy. Luminous back on the sore lag. Our timeout is just one of the many ways you can win. You know, to be a top Quake player, you need to be able to use all tools available to you. And one of the greatest tools is that clock. Oh, that quick snap to rail. Luminous taking quite a lot of damage, but this is Sorlag has plenty more where that came from. He's starting to get chucked down now with his lightning gun. Anarchy, wow, all over Luminous right away. Really? Takes down a relatively simple frag. Just really aggressive play, really aggressive play. He knew he could take it, Sorlag couldn't really take too much. The 80 damage rocket, that's going to be a fantastic start. Luminous is relatively weak, but he's still got a little bit of armor to take it though. So bear in mind, in comparison to Anarchy, he's still going to be ready for the fight. Quite intimidating though. We said before, Anarchy, one of these champions that really thrives off momentum. The faster he can go and the more he can stack himself up and control these power-ups. Absolute nightmare to deal with. Doing everything he can to make sure at least he has armor. If you're going to play as Anarchy, you've got to make sure you at least have some armor. You definitely don't want to get taken out by one rail and one rail only. Well, heavy armor's not a bad shout in that case. Brings himself up right away to 100 armor. Ouch. I think Anarchy, when he's got the heavy armor and his injection, he's, he's very hard to kill. He's got so much health. Yeah. Escapability too. The speed boost on the injection as well. Yeah, Luminous being starved of any sort of sustaining power-ups right now. Going into the OG. Wow. Catches Luminous before he even has a chance to dual wield. That was a fantastic result for Noctis as well. And just like that, Luminous down to his final champion. And the Ghost Walk has already been used. It'll be about 25 or so seconds until he gets it back. So no doubt Luminous can collect some uh, power-ups. Oh, time. misses the rail. Normally Noctis has been really good with those. That could have been game-changing. But even though right now, you know, we're, we're just under two minutes into this next round, Noctis does have a massive champion lead. So if he wants to just run that clock three minutes, he can. Unlikely, especially if you can just get that kill. But again, you know, time is on his side. At the same time, Luminous has that rail, but as I said, that gets tagged by one. Wow. Really can't take any more of that. Oh, we see now as the Ghost Walk available, or is it not back yet? Probably not, as Noctis takes a much faster second round this time. Really good performance from Noctis, actually. We were just saying we, we thought there were going to be lots of rounds going down to potential timeouts, but I think that's when Anarchy, he's, he's so fast, and he's so, it's so good for him to chase down, especially when he's got the injection, because he can do damage to you. You try and shoot those almost retreating rails or retreating rockets, do damage as he tries to chase you. If he's got injection, it's it's pretty much much harder to do that in general. But Noctis playing really well so far. So Luminous switching it up and starting with Nyx this time instead of Sorlag. Maybe think it just could be a better matchup for her specifically, or maybe Luminous just doesn't want to put Sorlag against this Anarchy. We saw before, you know, he tried running away, but Anarchy just doesn't let you do so. If Anarchy's got more health, and he's just laying into you. Almost quite hard to get away. If he watches the rail, though, Luminous getting aggressive. Caught him in the air. That's going to give him enough time to pop the injection, but with 15 health left, it does manage to save him. And another rocket's going to secure that with just amazing play from Noctis. Oh my lord, it just all comes down to that though, that, that that one rocket, just how much damage you can put out so quickly and just runs away. He's That's getting anarchy. out of there. Cheeky stuff. But at the same time, he's going so fast. If you're going in for those rockets, he's going to be so, even with the rail, he's going to be so hard to hit when he is going at this speed. 
misses. Blaskovic, though, if he can get him cornered, he's gone for the dual wield. The damage is coming out. The LG's restarting to add up. He goes oh. for the rockets, and Luminous is going to take that frag, getting Noctis Anarchy off of the table. Very important element, I think, uh, just making sure Noctis cannot play what is, at the moment, really his star champion. Forcing that away from him is pretty much your best chance at surviving the round. Catch him with the rocket again. Big damage going with the die roll, but not using it. Nice Noctis with there. almost non-existent health. Look at that. That must be that. by a sliver. That's got to be like one HP. That had to be. Speaking of one HP though, Mega Health giving you a little bit more than that, and Luminous able to finally control. I mean, that's the thing though. Now Noctis isn't on that Anarchy. The speed at which he can get around for power-ups, unless he uses his die roll to do so, is not going to be the same. Yeah, absolutely not. Which looks like Luminous is actually allowed to pick some of them up now. Heavy Armor's going to spawn, and Noctis once again takes it, but he really hasn't got a huge amount of health. He's going to have to take those 25s as he comes and goes. A lot more patience. Really looking towards that Mega Health. He wants to know if he's safe to get it. He is indeed. Noctis here misses the rail. This is a bad situation to be in when you're getting rocket range down from above. He got a couple from the bottom, though. So it's going to sort of, almost again, sort of force that disengage. You just moments. see how much this comes down to prediction, though. These guys constantly predicting and reading where the opponent is going to be. You know, keeping an eye on those timers. No, okay, well, heavy armor's coming up, so he's going to go there from one of two ways. You know, trying to head him off in this mega health, the exact same thing. At the same time, Luminous is going to be very cautious about this next fight. He did hear the fact that Noctis was towards the heavy armor. No doubt he knows he's taken it. Oh, that that was actually it. quite close and risky for Luminous to stay there for that shot, because if Noctis hit that rail, that would have been death. He can stay there for some shots, though, because of his passive, right? How it recharges him to his next 25 HP. It does take a couple of seconds of being out of uh, out of combat for that to happen, though. So if Noctis is sort of forcing him to stay in the fight... Oh, well, that's quite on a rocket. I thought it was going to take a lot more damage than that, though. Noctis yeah, me too. definitely seemed to have in a bad situation, but Noctis backs off. Two, bear in mind, they've still got two champions each. And again, round going on for quite a while. Wouldn't be surprised if we end up seeing a sudden death from these guys as well, with just the pace of the match currently. Perhaps we are over three, approaching three and a half minutes. That oh. real connect though. One more, and they're going to trade it out, but Noctis with that health advantage. Heavy armor coming up now as well. Luminous forced onto this Sawlag as the final pick. Now, we've seen Luminous Sawlag so far hasn't been able to really do a huge amount. However, that was against Noctis' Anarchy. For the rest of this round, Noctis won't have his Anarchy available. Still able to control the mega health though, Luminous. This is Sawlag still naturally going to be very healthy. Did a nice amount of damage there just to really sort of fend him away. One minute ten on the clock. Noctis, I mean, staying alive for one minute is quite a big ask with the speed and the damage and the range of these weapons, but Noctis really can be, afford to be the defensive player here. If he wins this via timeout, he's going to be up another round, which will make it three rounds, and it's going to make it that map for Noctis. He's going to be one up. Well, we've seen how explosive these rounds can be and how fast it can go between, you know, very passive and nothing really happening, both players being really careful to... Okay, now they're just... Absolutely just fragging all over the place, but already, you know, 40 seconds. And now we're starting to approach a time where the timeout is quite legitimate. You know, if Noctis is able to run for this 30 seconds, he will win the map. You know, this isn't just a round anymore. He will win the first map and bring himself one map away from qualifying for the regional finals. Especially when you factor in how much distance that die roll can come. But he is going face first into Luminous. Noctis hasn't caught him, but he's got so much health and armor. I don't think it even matters. Yeah, Luminous didn't really seem to see him either. Was unable to stop him. Well, at this stage, you're almost willing to call it, but from what we've seen in that previous like series, just never say never. However, with 10 seconds on the clock and a dire orb available, Noctis, no doubt, is going to try and run away. He Five is. Seconds. Oh, he slips oh, around. He didn't see him. That was such a costly thing to not see. Noctis taking that round and taking the map. Really well played there, though. Noctis taking the first map. First things first in this series. I mean, that, but that's it, right? You know, we sort of see a mixture of that. Some players don't really seem content running the clock whatsoever and really want to get in there. We saw that a lot on Thursday when it was sort of a lot of earlier round games. And I guess there was less pressure on the players because they knew they weren't quite that far into the bracket yet. But today, you know, there really has just been a complete switch up. And these players are happy to run that five minutes if they know they have that champion lead. If, I mean, you're against Sawlag and you're Ranger, you can probably outrun her if you're, uh, you know, playing well and, and, and using the map correctly. And Noctis, you know, We've already seen a thing or two from this guy and clearly proving that he does not need anarchy alive to win the map.
I think it's also the fact that there's a time and place for that kind of play style, right? Where if you know, you know, what we're consistently seeing is um, the first half of the map, or the, the round, I should say, and then the second half of the round is always quite different. Because the second that player who has the champion advantage realizes that the clock is on their side, they really start to pay attention to that. They slow down the pace of the match. They stop being so loud as they move around. They don't want the opponent to hear where they are. They're still going to listen out for the opponent and see if they're nearby. They're going to try and play that hyper defensive style. And it's almost like a light switch. The second they see that one minute warning, they're like, right, I've just got to survive for a minute and I'm going to win. If they're playing a light champion, the chance of them doing that successfully is even better because they're faster. But it's when you see um, that very first fight when they've both got that first champion and they are even, they realize, well, I mean, if I lose this first champion, then it instantly the clock is against me. And I think that sort of, especially for this series particularly, you know, Noctis very, very happy to run that clock down. I think it comes down to the player, and Noctis is happy to do that. So second map, what do you think we're going to see? Because last time we went to Corrupted Keep, I believe. Yes, it was Corrupted Keep. Um, no, Blood Covenant. Blood Covenant was the second map last time, and then Corrupted Keep was the final one. Blood Covenant looked really good for... Um, Nyx particularly on that map, and we know that both these players run Nyx in their composition. So if we see it again, no Blood Run, it's going to be instead. We see Blood Run for the first time today. Now Blood Run is definitely one of those strange maps uh, in the sense that, um, obviously, yeah, it's a classic map, but the champions in particular, we see some certain champions picked on this map that we don't really see. Galena being a big one. Yeah, exactly. Like there are some champions in this on this map in particular that you don't see much on certain maps, but with this one, Galena is picked quite a lot. I mean, well, that's for that. We saw a bit of Galena yesterday in Sacrifice for a very different reason. Oh yeah, than, than to usual. totally like night and day different yeah, reasons. So too. Sac Sacrifice, it's more you know heals for your team, um, more sort of just defensive purposes, I suppose. And obviously you've still got the burst potential for if you do fight, but mainly used for sort of team utility. Whereas when we see Galena in Duel, it is very much um, sort of you know teleporter exits, so you can really sort of deny that space if they come through and you've got enough of them stacked up because you could put more than one totem on the same place. So if they walk into you know a minefield of totems, as it were. They're just going to insta-kill themselves as soon as they use that teleporter. We've actually seen that a few times already. Um, but also, you know, you have that, that guaranteed burst in a 1v1. You have that instant health. You could put it around corners where they're going to be likely to run. Because you know, we're seeing players take similar routes around the map because there's, like, optimal ways of moving around. If, you know, you want to get to heavy armor, you can go a certain way. If you want mega health, you can go a certain way. And Galena does a good job of almost just, like, throwing a spanner in the works. That all of a sudden, you know, you're, you're taking your laps around your route. You walk around the corner and you see a totem and... You, know, you can shoot it, but if you shoot it, Galena knows where you are now. If you don't shoot it, you can't use that route. If you take the damage, Galena sees that you've taken the damage and runs around. So a very big, almost like strategic pick is Galena, especially on um, Blood Run. But it, it's a strategic element that I don't think, you know, I feel like it's just, it takes like the basics of Quake and then it sort of just adds an extra element, you know, where, you know, you've got the, the basic fundamentals of, of a map like Blood Run that these guys no doubt would have played hundreds and hundreds of times in their time playing Quake as a franchise. And now it's like, well, Galena is now just going to pretty much just put a stop to certain things. And I think that's actually quite a great strength that some champions can have, that they almost force you to play the game differently to what you're used to because of just how their general kit works. But Blood Run seems to have that really almost like big kill zone right in the middle of yep, the map. Smack you know, bang in the middle. The heavy armor is so risky you've got to take. He heavy armor up top, but it's right near a corner, so you know, prone to getting rocketed, prone to getting lightning gunned from below, because the rail is below it as well. And then like steps away from that, you have the mega health. So it seems to be quite chaotic in that sort of middle section, which seems to benefit some more than others, like champion wise. I think if you have to sort of like hurt yourself to get over to the mega uh, to, to, to the heavy armor, I should say, um from below, then that doesn't help you out too much. But then your know, characters like Nyx can all jump up there. Um you know, if, if you've got that enhanced mobility, you can get up there yourself. But I think it really adds to the safety if you haven't got to actually take a damage just to get the heavy armor. But some characters can't avoid that. At okay. least below, anyway. So I've just been informed that the draft has indeed happened. So we're going to see the match. Well, the match is going to start very shortly. So we're going to find out what composition these guys have actually well, choose to go to with in this duel situation. Three, As we can see, there's two, already a saw lag on deck. Saw lag on this map does look very effective fight. because you mentioned, right, that kill zone in the middle of the map. The acid can pretty much cover the entire area, particularly at the heavy armor. All right, so it looks like both players are running back the exact same champion composition. So uh, and Luminous back on this saw lag first. So feeling a bit more comfortable here, I suppose. Maybe. On on the map itself. Let's not forget, um, this would have been Luminous's map choice because uh, Noctis did take that first map. So Luminous, I'm not expecting to see a lot of comfort on this. I feel like catching Anarchy though with those grounded rockets, it, it's just so much harder because of that Anarchy passive, that increased mobility while you're in the air. If you hit him with a rocket, he's not going to be as free to movement and predictions on the ground. But Noctis very quickly taking that first frag, but gets hit by the acid. And as you can see down there, Luminous now knows exactly where Noctis is because he saw the damage numbers. <laughs> 
indeed, but losing that Solak -like that early forced the Ghost Walk too. So like Noctis yeah. already has the momentum in this round. There is a chunky cooldown on that Ghost Walk as well. Even with those Hourglass pickups, it is still 26 seconds until it's back. And that's enough time for Noctis to catch him. I think Noctis at this stage really using the damage he did for the rail not to finish up a frag, but to really keep Luminous away. While he's having to get you know his health and armor back up, Noctis was now able to freely take the heavy armor and the mega health, and now he's stacked as he can be for the next fight. Oh, he's right behind top, him. Yeah, tops himself up on armor. That could be really important, especially with these squishy champions. But a fight coming out here. A lot of damage coming out on the rocket from Luminous, but yeah, the Ghost Walk goes away. I'm resetting back this. Oh no, he's not. He's chasing aggressively. Had to use the injection. He didn't take a huge amount of damage, but Noctis, obviously with the low health pool that Anarchy has, he's still in a little bit of trouble. Oh, the heavy armor goes to Noctis. That's what I'm talking about, though, how dangerous it can be. Oh! He almost got railed, and Noctis is returning the frag with a rocket launcher. Looked really good for Luminous, but Noctis just being that one step ahead. He's got a really good spawn as well, but obviously actually being a bit careful, doesn't even try and shoot the rail. He just wants to get out of there. Already though, Noctis, the massive advantage. Blaskovitz walks straight onto a rocket Luminous in a bit of trouble here. Oh, still trying to stop him from getting this heavy armor, but it looks like Noctis is going to quite easily be able to guarantee it. And as Luminous comes back, that looks like Noctis being a little bit more patient. No, he teleports behind him. Cheeky yeah. stuff coming out from Noctis. Just caught him from the back end. Once again. Just, it's a level of control that Noctis, I think, is really establishing. And that's a really good caught a good rhythm on the rockets, catching it in between, taking minimal damage while at the same time getting that heavy armor and mega health. <gasps> oh, Mr. Rail, that could have been make or break. Hang on a minute, Luminous. A little bit confident going in there, taking a couple of rockets before using that teleport to get away. But you consistently see this sort of middle ground. This is where Noctis wants to control. Oh, attacks him. Right, the amazing reaction seeing him come out of that teleporter. Noctis ready as always. Heavy armor goes away of Noctis again. Noctis having complete control over these power-ups. This is not what you want inside of Luminous when he's down so many champions. Trying to stop him, deter him from getting the mega health, but isn't going to work. Really expecting Luminous to go for something, but Luminous being so careful does not want to overextend at all. However, he's been hit by one rail. Can Noctis get a second? I thought like if he gets two rails back to back, that's when we'll see him go in. But right now, no need to overextend. Noctis has the champion advantage. Oh, waiting again. He has no health left whatsoever. Oh, and a little the trade. Bit. Wow. But a trade definitely in Noctis's favor. You're taking your first champion down for the last round one. Goes the way of Noctis. That was almost a lifeline. Almost a lifeline until the trade occurred, and that was it. I mean. If Luminous can do that first and get rid of Anarchy straight away in the trade, maybe not so bad. Speaking of which, starting with Nox this time instead of the saw lag. Well, I really feel like uh, Noctis' Anarchy has been a consistent problem for Luminous this entire series. You know, it, it's just clearly a, a champion that Noctis is really comfortable with, and he plays it confidently. The speed of which he can navigate the map, the speed of which he can control those items and get from one point of the area to another. I mean, it's it's in some ways just really uncontested. Once again, though, Noctis on the Sanic, you see him sort of trying to go around. Luminous seems to be a little bit starved for pickups right now. Can he get the heavy armor, though? I don't know if Noctis is quite close enough to stop him. Yes, he can. Hits a rail. Noctis goes down a little bit, but not substantially. I think the next pick has been a lot more effective versus Anarchy as well because consistently we're seeing Noctis catch Luminous in a bad place. And he kind of just sort of cleans up with the mobility. He's hard to rocket. He can sort of get in and out as he sees fit. But now Nyx kind of has that survivability with that Ghost Walk. So if Luminous gets in a bad situation, he can escape. Not for free. There's a read there. Noctis has to try and read where he's going to go, but it's better than nothing. Oh, he sees the heavy armor, gets one rocket. The heavy armor going to add up. Be still good for Luminous there, regardless. Taking a little bit of damage, but still does manage to bag it. Ah, it's such a dangerous heavy armor to try and take because it is out in the open. It's so prone to rocket fire, too. Here comes Noctis. Almost heading him off, but obviously the teleport gets used. The consistent repositioning on this map is really special. You can see Luminous really waiting towards that teleport or exit, though. He really thinks Noctis is going to go for it, but... Just opts to go for the other one instead. Always jumping down. We're going to see a fight break out. Oh, wow. That was slick. Noctis wastes no time. Just in and out. Get the heavy armor. Get out there. It's a really sort of fast, like a hit and run style that Noctis is trying to establish. Wow. Going straight through a point. Flank rocket. He's only got four, five health. 
forced to use his uh, injection right there, but I don't think he'll mind though. I mean, seeing the damage he just put out on Luminous, oh, we shot the rail out. Let's not forget, this is Anarchy with no armor. One rail will kill him. You know, if that rail clicked, that would have been over. Yeah, he would have lost that champion for sure. But deeper, that mega health comes through though. Just taking him out. Oh, it did save him from that rail though. He's not got the injection for a few seconds, but that hourglass pickup is going to sort of half that completely from 20 to 10. And there we go. He's got access to it. That sequence just to get the injection back, I think, is really important. But bear in mind, again, because Anarchy is at 76, he hasn't used enough injections. He hasn't actually had enough of a chance to use the injections to permanently increase his health to the point where he can tank rails if he's on full health with no armor. He well, is the risk still. Is, if you just use it whenever it's up and you're just constantly trying to increase that max health, if you get caught in a fight like this and you don't have it, oh! he needed that. There we go. That's exactly what I'm talking about. If you run the risk of using the injection just normally while you're running around to increase your health and you get caught in a fight without it, you will die. But if you save it for fights just like that, you can keep yourself alive. In some ways, he's able to almost double his health pool. Well, he can pretty much give himself his exact health amount back when he needs it. Oh, Luminous. the rail that would have killed Luminous. He did jump into the acid, so Luminous is going to kind of have those eyes on him for the duration of those five ticks. That's why we saw the rocket sort of spray. He knew where Noctis was going to be. Oh, oh lovely rockets. Lord. Amazing rockets. And now Luminous is down to his final champion again. Noctis looking really uncontested throughout this entire series, to be completely honest. Ops to just pop the injection now, just completely to uh, sort of just increase that health pool again. Didn't really need it to heal at the time, but massive advantage now. Blaskovitz is there. Mega health coming up any second now. All he knows, chases him away from it. Minimal it damage though. Right now, though. Really minimal damage. The 26 damage and I believe like a five. That one makes a difference though. 80 damage on the rail. And now Luminous with no armor behind him. Yeah, he's having to retreat right there. Noctis is going to sort of control this mid area again while he tries to safely secure that heavy armor. Luminous though, trying to keep him spaced out as well. But again, that one minute warning. Luminous is down to his final champion. And Noctis already, the second he realized he had a minute left to work with, he's not being hyper aggressive. He can just run away for 50 seconds. Luminous has to take out two champions to even even things out in this round. Oh, walks we'll straight onto a rocket. That can be some good damage for Luminous. Noctis decides that he's losing this fight. Just gets out of there. Just want to take these rail trades. Luminous very stocked up on health and armor right now. So in a good position to take out this anarchy. I mean, even though he ran away, he's winning, right? 30 seconds left. Luminous has no choice but to take two champions out in that time, and that is a it's a tall order. That's such a good point. Perhaps Noctis is content just running away for 20 seconds. I mean, let's not forget, you know, it's Anarchy versus Blaskovitz. Not an amazing character at chasing you down versus a champion who is amazing at just running around. The dual wheel comes out. Oh, he's got caught in the corner. But he's alive. That injection saves him once again, and Luminous unable to chase him in time. I feel like that might be game over. I mean, two champions in five seconds. And he that's just used his dual wield. He doesn't even have an ability. I think this is all she wrote. Noctis takes round two, brings himself to match point. Yes, he does. One round away from qualifying for regional finals. Very important round for Noctis, but in many ways, an even more important round for Luminous. He has no options but to win this round. Otherwise, that's he it. has. He's out a mountain of a comeback to make. He needs to get three rounds in a row and then another game. They both sort of meet one end of the hallway to the other, but Noctis, we've just seen the sheer amount of damage that this guy makes when he's playing Anarchy in, in you know, in multiple game modes, but in Duel particularly, this really seems to be his bread and butter starting champion, and it does so well for him. He's had so many good results with just Anarchy in particular. Hey, we saw him. Oh, oh my lord. Nice that is little insane. flick. Well, that's the tried and true, right? Swapping to that rail gun right at the last minute and getting that, that, that quick damage when you realize you've done so much. Catches him from below with a lightning gun. This is not a good turnaround for Luminous. Oh, he's getting chased, and that's it. Wow, just like that, Luminous is on his final champion once again. Noctis has all the advantage in the world right now. In less than 45 seconds, Noctis dealt with not one, but two champions so quickly. On the verge of getting a second, misses the rail. He's going to try and get out, but he's so weak. That fraction of a second teleporter saving Luminous there from that rail. He's able to stock himself up again, gets a little bit of armor, puts himself back up to full health, which is really useful, but again, put in the corner. Yeah, but getting stuck in the corner of that room is not a great position to get stuck against if they've got rockets on deck. And again, the mega health coming through. Noctis, is this going to be the final moment? He's kind of weak, but he has got the injection, so it's not the end of the world if he needs to use it. He hasn't even had to use his injection yet at this point. It's been such a good round for Noctis. Is that sort of cautious play that Luminous has no choice. If he gets caught out by Noctis, you know, Noctis is here. He knows he's got the advantage right now. Getting some damage down, getting out of there as well. Knows that Blaskovitz has that dual wheel. Doesn't want to get stuck in close proximity against him. 
But at this stage, the pressure's on. He lands one rail. Just look at how little HP Luminous has, even though the passive will top him back up. As you can see, they actually can safely take another rail and survive. But at this stage, oh, oh what a reason! Two rockets back to back. Noctis qualifies for the EU regionals. Wonderful play as well. And again, all down to this anarchy. Do not, do not let Noctis's anarchy survive. Because if you do, he's just going to run away with it. And that's two games back to back, two maps. And Anarchy, the MVP for Noctis. And once again, it's not a massive surprise. We saw him on Thursday. His first ever match, he literally took nine... Uh, how, many, how, how, how many lives have that been? That would have been three rounds twice. So six, yeah, six lives with Anarchy just by himself. And then his next game, we saw him on Thursday versus Avec, which was the same thing. When his Anarchy was allowed to survive, he would run rings. And that's exactly what we saw here this time. Noctis Anarchy really showing why it is so powerful. We saw it become a lot more prominent when the, uh, the map changed to Bloodrun as well, even though, bear in mind, that would have been Luminous's pick. Uh, when you lose the map, you have the option to choose the map you want to play afterwards, because obviously it's kind of giving you that little advantage because you've just lost the last one. That trade was really unfortunate. However, um, even though that was the case, I mean, we've seen that. Actually, we saw Noctis play on this map on Thursday, and he looked completely comfortable on it, you know, and, it, and again, it was with that Anarchy pick. We basically didn't even get a chance to see any of Noctis's other champions there. It was 100% Anarchy. Well, you know, props to Luminous for getting so far. You know, he did have to take out some tough competition to oh, get yeah, here today. Definitely. And obviously, that, 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 I'm sure that won't be the end for him. This is just week one of qualifying. For Duel, you do have four total weeks, so three more chances to qualify and uh, try and get towards those regional finals. Well, so I have no doubt we'll see him again. I, I think that in week number one, bear in mind, just to remind everyone, we had over 700 people sign up for our Thursday tournament. And obviously, this is down to the final 16. If you are one of those 16 players in this bracket that has made it to the top 16 among 700 participants, it's fair to assume that we're going to see them again in future weeks. But 